Namaste Angels. I'm here to do the reading for Sunday the 28th and Monday the 29th, and I'm in a very strange place. I walked around the hotel, including my room, looking for, which is a suite, but I just wasn't happy with any of the surrounding. I didn't feel, I don't know, comfortable, I guess is the word. I do the reading, so uh, the place I've chosen is probably odd. <laughs> But that's me. I'm odd. So I'm outside in the parking lot on the curb, actually, in front of the hotel, on the ground, sitting sort of Indian style on the floor. The first card that I've been coming to is the King of Staves and Wotan. And this is interesting because all this morning I've been thinking about not only Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and, you know, what's been going on there with the flooding, but the word baton. Um batten down the hatches so i don't know if that's warning of something else to come or if that's in reference to what's already happened i think batten down the hatches full steam ahead has to do with boats and you know maybe going through water so perhaps the flooding and then i started thinking about batten rouge the word baton rouge a red baton a red wand a red rod a red staff that's you know maybe the king of staves the king of wands the king of fire leo sagittarius aries so maybe my thoughts had to do with somebody out there who's watching a leo or two perhaps a sagittarius or two a aries or two or maybe it has to do with a virgo with a leo sagittarius or aries sun moon arising and well not sun <laughs> moon arising Yeah, you may notice during the reading my nails are sort of Mardi Gras Fat Tuesday-ish that was not on purpose but I think it is supposed to be in honor um, of Louisiana and maybe not only of Baton Rouge but of New Orleans and the anniversary of Katrina um, which is the last day of it was would be the 29th Monday for which this reading is it's for Sunday the 28th and Monday the 29th 29th is also Michael Jackson's birthday I'm just open to the princess of cups but the king of wands is back now the ten of coins awesome But the King of Wands is back again. I'm going to cut. And now I'm on the Princess of Staves or Wands. So keeping in that wand energy, which again, now we've entered Virgo. So I think this has to do with Baton Rouge. Cause that's what I, I was in the shower and I started thinking about red baton, batting down the hatches, you know? So I'm not sure exactly why I threw out those things. Maybe you guys will have some thoughts of your own, but here's another wands card to go along with it. Another baton. I'm gonna ask Archangel Michael for cards. You may also notice that I cut my nails all the way down. That was random too. I didn't bring any of my polish with me. I was gonna get my nails blue at the suggestion of my youngest child. And at the bottom of the deck, the overall energy is the Eight of Cups. 
this moving on to something more spiritual, something more meaningful. Thinking about how you can better yourself and humanity. The greater good. Yeah, so I'd asked my youngest to pick out colors for me and she picked out blue, which I love blue. I'm wearing blue right now and I'm, you know, of the blue ray, at least in my present incarnation. Um, so I was like, okay, cool, blue. The masculine is sacrifice or major arcana card number 12, which is the hanged man. And at the last minute, my niece said, how about purple? And I said, well, okay, you know, I need a glitter that matches it because I always get my ring fingers um, painted in the glitter, which I'm not sure what that's about or from where that came, but it's something I do, it's part of my style. She said, okay. And the design, I always tell the nail tech to do whatever they want and choose the colors they want. So I had this was none of my doing at all. This is all the nail tech who did this. And then, um, suggested that I cut my nails. Surrounding the masculine is Isis and Osiris, the lovers in reverse. So far, two major arcana cards for the masculine. And, um, the, yeah, cutting them was random too. She said, you wanna start over? And the guy passing by, he was a nail tech too, but I think he may have also been the owner. He's like, I think you should start over. I think you should start over too. And I was like, all right, screw it. Start over, cut him. So here I am. And wow, under the lovers and Isis and Osiris um, is Cleopatra and Caesar fertility also in reverse. Very interesting. Three major arcana cards for the masculine. Feminine. Oh no, not this mess again. This is the false sense of entrapment. The eight of arrows, the eight of swords, eight of air. Gives us two eights so far though. Excuse the ant. I'm not going to attempt to kill him or anything. He's not attempting to kill me. So I'm not going to attempt to kill him. Just, and this is his house, not mine. So just excuse him if you're able. Um, and also surrounding the feminine, there's a bunch on my shoe too. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, I probably sat right next to a mound or something. Um, surrounding the feminine is the five of cups. which I don't like the five of cups or the eight of arrows, but together they make 13, which is cool, which is four. So, which is, four is Archangels and particularly Archangel Michael. Um, but 13 is release, you know, death to what no longer serves. It's also God. And again, it's also four. So that would be God <laughs> um, or in his other vibration, Archangel Michael. Um, and in the feminine subconscious, opposite fertility in reverse, is the king of cups. Crowning, another major arcana card. Number nine, contemplation, or the hermit, in reverse. And shared at our feet, the nine of staves in reverse which is not so bad it is another wands card i will point out though um so more of that energy more batons more baton baton rouge um but it's in reverse so it's like an overcoming of that feeling the need to be defensive the need to make sure that everyone understands i am who i am when you say it and in the center from archangel michael the Prince of Cups. And he appears to be, is he wearing a baby? You know those pouches with the babies? Why is this so full looking? He may be carrying a baby. I'm not sure what this is here. But it's diagonal to fertility and I think he's carrying a baby. This is Tristan. Okay, we'll go over the meanings of all of those in just one second. And I'll get the advice too, the advice as well in just one second. I want to uh, 
Oh, we seem to have lost on this day, so I'll get the advice now. Yep, I seem to have lost it completely, like my whole connection here. Maybe I'm not meant to do it today. So let's get the meaning of these cards. Now, you know that I could tell you the meaning of the cards in general, but I like to share the little stories and I think people enjoy hearing them from the book in this particular deck. So that's why I'm doing that. So beginning with the first one, I see the in the male subconscious fertility in reverse. Cleopatra, queen of the fertile Nile, reigned as empress of Egypt for over two decades. During this time, she became known throughout the ancient world for her seductive charms, musical voice, and unusual intelligence. Caesar immediately fell in love with the young queen and successfully helped her regain her throne. Together, they had a child named Caesarian. So again, I think this prince here is also holding a child, and this is opposite. Um, and this is the heart of the matter, by the way. And, in any case, it's a cups card. It's the Prince of Cups. So it's an actual person um, that, that is in your life or comes into your life. Somebody is embodying this energy if they are not themselves a sun, moon, or rising um, Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. Meanings in reverse deprivation or sterility feeling the lack of material resources limitation that overwhelms so it can be a feeling of being sterile I would say it is not actually being sterile in the case of anyone here because if spirit wants you to have a baby you will have a baby even if you are sterile or have been told that you are sterile. I have been told that I could not have children um, and it was why I chose in that case, um, I definitely wanted to have my son. I was told I couldn't have children because I have a retroverted uterus. Turns out now, fast forward, somebody says that I don't have, a, I have the opposite of a retroverted uterus. It's not tilted, tilted backwards, it's tilted forward. But that's a whole other story. In, in the meantime, I had been told it was retroverted. I knew somebody else. My nursery school teacher had been a friend of my mother's and I had remember hearing her story that she too had a retroverted uterus and therefore couldn't have children. So it made total sense to me that I could not have children. Um, that was wrong, <laughs> but I, at the time I got when I got pregnant with my son, I thought that he was like a miracle baby. The doctor had sent me to get a, um, a sonogram, not because I was she thought I was pregnant, but because she thought that I had um, fibroids or some kind of tumor. So it was when I went for that sonogram that they said, "No, you're pregnant." And that's how that went. And I was like, "Oh my goodness, a miracle child." And it's a son. Look at this. The prince. At least of my house. <laughs> um, but I was not sterile. And I did have the ability to have a child. In fact, I went on to have another and another. Um, so the, my point being, if God wants you to have a child, you will have a child. And he seems to want uh, the first of these, the 144,000 that... Um, choose the light continue in the light follow the light and make it through this which will be most uh as per what i've been seen and t what i have seen and been told as well as what i have read um were the words of saint germain in channeled message from him that are done by another spiritualist um that most will in fact make it so if that's the case those most will have children when it's their divine time to have children at least one with the partner okay they will begin to produce the rainbow children the children that have never been here before their souls have never been here before 
these are brand new souls uh, that God is wanting to send down just full of love and nothing else no bad memories no karma none of that stuff okay let's see if I can get this thing back on while I'm reading this too so the meanings in reverse we went over that I'm gonna go on to love in reverse or the lovers The myth of Isis and Osiris illustrates the power of love and how it can transform us irrevocably. Isis and Osiris were blissful in their love for each other. Jealousy ate at their brother Set's soul, granting him no rest. He trapped Osiris in a coffin and heaved him into the Nile. Using the power of her love, the goddess Isis brought Osiris back to life for a final embrace. Meanings in reverse. Feeling unworthy of love. Manipulating others with sexuality. Immaturity and irresponsibility in love relationships. Game playing. Uh, I guess that goes perfectly with this okay there's a feeling of being overwhelmed by things and of being a sense of being sterile you know basically in life and so that makes a lot of sense as to why then that a person like that might feel like they at least have to give off the impression that they don't care about anything and they're not taking anything seriously they're just playing and they have nothing to offer anyone but sex, you know, but the golden penis, but the, you know, um, sexuality of a, of a female, if, if that's the case, that's all they have to offer, that's all they have to give. And that's why these two cards are here uh, together in reverse. And that is why he is in hangman position in his current, in his present. I'll read you that one from the book too. Sacrifice. The hanged man, Orpheus and Eurydice. Keywords, impasse, surrender, patience, compassion. Orpheus was the son of Apollo. With his songs, Orpheus moved the hearts of humans and gods. He was loved by the nymph, Eurydice and he loved her wildly in return. Eurydice was killed soon after they wed. Distraught and mad with sorrow, Orpheus decided to rescue her with his song. He stood before Persephone, goddess of the dead, and sang until she relented and honored his request. But with a difficult condition, Orpheus must not look at his wife until they were safely home. Orpheus failed this test as he sacrificed his quest to ease Eurydice's insecurities. In upright meanings, being caught between worlds, short-term sacrifice to reach a long-awaited goal, taking care of others' needs even if they're not in your personal interest, gaining compassion from difficult experiences. So these, the energy around him and what's been in his subconscious, what he's been thinking about, what's been weighing on his mind, what shows up in his sleep, have moved him to want to make some changes and so he is the hangman and he's got some decisions to make and I guess this is all affecting the feminine in that she is now the eight of arrows feeling that she is trapped that there is no movement here there is no love here so he's overwhelmed by his feelings in a uh, a positive way because they're moving him to make something to do something better she's overwhelmed by her feelings in a more negative way because they're leading her to five of cups they're leading her to miss the fact that these two cups are still standing and she's concerned about the three that have spilled out she is doing oh woe is me there is no love surrounding me and that is not true because the heart of the matter again is the prince of cups and in the female subconscious is the king of cups 
diagonal to the prince. So there's plenty of love surrounding her. She is encased in love with the exception of the Eight of Arrows, which is in her own mind. So she's encased in love. Even inclusive of these two cups here, everything around her is love, with the exception of what's in her own mind, what she has created, um, envisioned is her situation, while it is not. Crowning shared major arcana card contemplation or the hermit in reverse lovers abelard and eloise keywords withdrawal introspection retreat peter abelard was famed as a brilliant theologian and teacher during the medieval ages abelard quickly became known for mastery of philosophical dialogue and independence of thought. He even went against church policy and took positions sympathetic to pagan traditions. However, it was his love for Eloise that caused the biggest scandal. The story of their forbidden love is set out in Abelard's 1130 book, The History of My Calamities. Meanings upright, listening to your heart. Retreat, enter inner life at this time. Your needs are not so focused on relationships with others, but on your relationship with yourself. That's why it is diagonal here to the five of cups upright, for example, in the feminine, um, because she needs to focus on this. She needs to get out of, oh, woe is me. That's why it is diagonal here to love in the masculine, because he needs to get over himself, period. And it, and it appears he knows that, uh, and which would explain why it's also next to sacrifice and next to the Eight of Arrows. It's a clear indication, but also above the Prince of Cups, which is, at the end of the day, the heart of the matter and the most important. What does the Prince of Cups mean in this deck? Well, it means grace and talent, making dreams into reality. A young man who represents the forces of love, beauty, and emotional richness has the ability to inspire. That's the Prince of Cups. That's the heart of the matter. So he can turn all of this around, all of this upside down stuff, he can turn it around. And so can the feminine, she can help. She too, like him, is the Eight of Cups. That's the overall energy, this spiritual elevation. I think it's a very positive reading at the end of the day. Maybe not as flowery and as I like sometimes when I take my other cards out of the deck for a little advice. Retreat is yet again at the bottom, which is indicative of what we've already seen. The hermit, the hangman, lovers in reverse somebody that has to do some introspection that message is being repeated now by the universal love oracle by tony carmine salerno and i'm just open to expectancy so this <laughs> baby and this baby is also that message is also being um repeated that maybe that's on the minds of both and when we get past all of this that's bringing us down, we know what's waiting for us. Retreat still at the bottom. Look what I was just made to look at. So made. And at the bottom of the deck, now, birth. So there you go. Once the masculine gets over himself, he once he transmutes all of the negative energy to positive, any negative emotions to positive ones, sends everything that he can't handle himself back to source, back to God, back to love, capital L. 
he will be ready. In the meantime, the feminine has a guardian angel watching over her and she's fine. She needs to get out of this funk. She needs to get out of woe is me. She needs to get out of the energy of the eight of arrows. She needs to add them together, make them a 13 and release them. Death to this bullshit. Sorry to put it so bluntly, but that's what it is. Let's see if I can get back to on this day. If not, I will say thank you for joining me, angels, and namaste. But give me one second here. I should have been fooling with this computer while I was doing something else. But once my mind gets in a certain place, once I get focused in a certain way, I can't, like, it is what it is. All right, August 28th. I think we're going to have it. Yep, here we go, historical events. On this day in the year 1189, or 811 backwards, or 1, but 811 backwards would be, represent to me at least, St. Germain, who I mentioned earlier, and Lady Portia. So maybe this event is about justice. The Third Crusade. The Crusaders begin the siege, or acre, under Guy of Lusignan. 1565, or 111, the oldest city in the U.S. is established, established St. Augustine, Florida. I have to tell you a little bit about St. Augustine. The year 1609, English explorer Henry Hudson discovers and explores the Delaware Bay. 1864, the first Geneva Convention governing rules of warfare is signed by 26 nations, eight 1963, Martin Luther King delivers his I Have a Dream speech addressing Civil Rights March at Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. Did you know pharmacists John Leah and William Perrins manufacture Worcestershire sauce on August 28, 1837? Famous birthdays, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. 1749 to 1832. Elizabeth Ann Bailey Seaton. She is a saint. She was born in 1774. It doesn't say she's a saint here, but I know who Elizabeth Ann Seaton is. She's a saint. Trust me. Um, she was born in 1774. She died in 1821. Jack Kirby, who with whom I am not familiar, but it looks like he may have been a cartoonist because there is a cartoon of him here. That's how he's pictured. He was born in 1917 and died in 1994. Paul Martin, still with us. He is 77 years old. Double divinity, double God. Shania Twain is 50 years old. And she's a beautiful woman. No wonder she feels like one. And hockey player Pierre Turgeon is 46 years old on this day, August 28th. Famous wedding, 1775. Statesman John Hancock at 38 or 11 weds hostess Dorothy Quincy, 28, in Fairfield, Connecticut. 1811 or 911 or 11 again English romantic poet Percy Bysshe Shelley 19 or 1 elopes to Scotland with his first wife Harriet Westbrook who was 16 or 7 and together they were 8 more 8 1924 British children's writer Enid Blyton 27 marries editor Major Hugh Alexander Pollock, DSO, he was 36, they were both nine, 27 and 36, nine, nine. 1968, one day marriage of character Murphy Brown. 1997, British Indian novelist and essayist Salman Rushdie, 50, weds Elizabeth West. Famous divorces, 1953, jazz musician Ella Fitzgerald, 36 or nine, divorces bass player. Ray, bass player, sorry. <laughs> Ray Brown, 27, also nine after six years of marriage. 2009 or 11, Blake Fielder, civil, 27, nine. Divorces Grammy Award winning singer Amy Winehouse, 25, seven, due to adultery after two years of marriage.
famous deaths. Albert Friedrich. He doesn't look very nice, but I don't know. He's dressed like that uh, beef eater on the liquor bottle. Anyway, um, he was born in 1553 and he died in 1618. The next is Junipero Serra. He looks like he may have been a priest um, by his clothes and the cross on his neck, the crucifix with Jesus on it around his neck. Looks like it may be silver too, at least it's painted that way. He was born in 1713, he died in 1784. Frederick Law Olmsted, 18, 18, 1822, he died in 1903, and Emmett Till was murdered on this day. He was born in 1941, he died in 1955. Wow, that was a heavy day. Martin Luther King and Emmett Till. Not that they both died, but they were both they both had something going on on this day. So very heavy energy. And the reason for that, I'm sure, that I haven't figured out yet, but I'm sure all these numbers have specific meanings. The 29th, Monday, historical events. 1526, the Battle of Mohawks, M-O-H-A-C-S, Decisive battle, Hungarian Empire is conquered by Ottomans, led by Suleiman the Magnificent. 1533, Francisco Pizarro orders the death of the last Incan king of Peru, Atahualpa, A-T-A-H-U-A-L-P-A. -A -A. 1825, Portugal recognizes the independence of Brazil. 1842, Great Britain and China signed the Treaty of Nanking, N-A-N-K-I-N-G, and ends the Opium War. 2005, Hurricane Katrina makes its second landfall as a Category 3 hurricane, devastating much of the U.S. Gulf Coast from Louisiana to the Florida Panhandle, kills more than 1,836, causes over $115 billion in damage. Did you know the seismic sea waves created by Krakatoa, K-R-A-K-A-T-O-A -A -A, eruption create a rise in English Channel 32 hours after the explosion on August 29th in the year 1883 or 9-11? Famous birthdays, John Locke, 1632. He died in 1704. Bergman, the actress, she was born in 1915. She died in 1982 or 11, 11. Charlie Bird Parker, the saxophonist, he was born in 1920. He died in 1955. Michael Jackson was born in 1958, 113. He died in 2009, 11. Chris Hadfield, the astronaut, is 56 years old, 11. And Brian Chesky, not sure who he is, but it is his birthday. Happy birthday to him. He's 34 years old. Famous weddings, 1885, Pulitzer Prize winning American author from the age of innocence, Edith Jones, 23, marries Edward Teddy Wharton at 36. Nine. 1955, the untamed youth actress Mamie Van Doren, 24, weds trumpeter and actor Ray Anthony, 33, master number 33. In 1964, the U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney, at 23, weds Lynn Ann Vincent, also 23, 5'5", five, five, at the First Presbyterian Church of Casper in Wyoming. In 1968, Norwegian Crown Prince Harold, later Harold V, marries Sonia Haraldsen. That's interesting. At Oslo Cathedral. And in 1993, actress Elk Summer, 52, weds Wolf Walter, 46. Famous deaths. 
Ingrid Bergman is here again. I guess she died on her birthday. Yikes. And Brigham Young, 1801. He was born, he died in 1877. Brigham Young, after whom the Mormon religion is designed, created. He's the one who said that he saw the invisible book and wrote down invisible stuff and people believed him. <laughs> and there you have that. <laughs> okay. Um, Lee Marvin, I believe he was an actor. He died on this day. He had been born in 1924. He died in 1987. And again, Ingrid Bergman, born in 1915, died in 1982. And I said I would tell you who St. Augustine was since the first city in the United States was designated on August 28th, after, named after him. So St. Augustine, um, he's going by a few different names here. This one I'm gonna use, the St. Augustine of Hippo, H-I-P-P-O, also known as St. Austin, just so you guys know, A-U-S-T-I-N, as in like Texas, or Blessed Augustine, and the Doctor of Grace. Very interesting. But you know, Seraphim, being, my niece has joined me. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> um, seraphim being serpents, being snakes, when they wrap around the rod, a rod, a staff, and they have those angel wings at the top, that represents medicine that represents seraphim. That's an angel. Think of the, me the medical symbol. It's two wings attached to a staff with a snake wrapped around it. That's the symbol of seraphim. That's why they are the healers. Okay, the healing angels. Why snakes were bad? People make you, that's the thing people make you think. Some are bad, some are not. <laughs> And I could, she's saying she thought snakes were bad. I've been over this on a few videos. We can talk about that again. Um, St. Augustine is viewed as one of the most important church fathers in Western Christianity for his writings in the patristic era, P-A-T-R-I-S-T-I-C. Among his most impor important works are the City of God and Confessions two books written by him according to his content oh, my screen and I keep touching this screen forgetting that this laptop unlike the other that I normally have is not a touch screen so I'm just being a doofus right now touching the <laughs> <laughs> um, according to his contemporary Jerome Augustine established anew the ancient faith in his early years he was heavily influenced by Manichaeism, M-A-N-I-C-H-A-E-I-S-M, -E and afterward by Neoplatonism, like as in Plato, P-L-A-T-O-N-I-S-O-M. After his baptism and conversion to Christianity in 387, Augustine developed his own approach to, philosoph to philosophy and theology, accommodating a variety of methods and perspectives, believing that the grace of Christ was indispensable to human freedom, as it is. He is the prince of freedom. How can you have freedom without the leader? You cannot. He helped formulate the doctrine of original sin and made seminal contributions to the development of just the just war theory. So I don't know what that is. I'm not sure I would agree with it. I'm not sure what makes war just um in any case other than you being the being that is attacked that would be the only time that i would think war was just yeah. um so i don't know how i feel about that but that's what he's famous for and you can read more about him on wikipedia that's all that i'm going to do i hope you guys have a good day namaste angels